When thinking of a cable car, you would probably picture a snowy mountain with people skiing. You might think of a hilly urban environment with commuters using it to get to work, like in Medellin, La Paz and Portland, Oregon. But there are exceptions to everything, and the Dursey Island cable car is definitely one of them. The cable car connects the island of Dursey with the tip, or the head, of the Barrow Peninsula in the far southwest of Ireland. When it was opened in 1969, it had the purpose of transporting goods, humans and livestock between the two landmasses. Decades later, it has become one of Ireland's many small attractions, attracting 17,000 visitors in 2017. Few inhabitants still use the cable car, as there are only five permanent residents still on the island today. The cable car takes you a total of 374 metres across the Dursey Sound, a treacherous strip of water, especially in the stormy months. A one-way trip takes about 8 minutes. This means that the cable car travels at an average speed of 0.7 metres per second, or 2.6 kilometres per hour. The maximum allowed number of passengers is 6, but this rule isn't always adhered to, especially involving young children. There is only one car making the journey back and forth, 10 hours per day in the summer and 7 hours per day in the winter. There is a lunch break between 1 and half past 1. The cable car has proven quite popular lately, with queuing times getting up to an hour on very busy days. This is mainly due to the low capacity, as the cable car can only transport 45 passengers per hour. There is a car park and there are some food trucks on the mainland side. The ticket office houses some toilets as well as waiting facilities. From the edge of the mainland, a couple of walking trails start, taking you along the beautiful coast, past some cliffs to the other parts of the peninsula. The other side, the island part, has only an anchor point for the cable car and a little machine house, or rather a shelter. Tickets can't be bought here as you will have bought the return ticket on the mainland. Dursey Island itself has a couple of walks, one of them being a full circle around the island, taking around four hours to complete. Another walk is up the 250 metre tall hill, whose trail starts at the cable car. The steep ascent requires some strength and water, but the view is definitely worth it. Only a couple of people are on the island at one time, but there are plenty of sheep to graze on the abundance of grass. There are no facilities on the island, except for some B&Bs and other accommodations, but restaurants and cafes are nowhere to be found. The few inhabitants of the island get priority, and some livestock is still moved by the cable car to this day. The cable car forms an enormously important link between the island and the mainland. Even though there's a ferry, which runs very irregularly, the water is too treacherous to cross while a storm passes by. This ferry does mean that there are cars on the island. I thank you all for watching this short documentary about the Dursey Island cable car. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider visiting my website at www.worldcitytransit.com for more information. I post blogs centered around transit, post videos and pictures, and make my own maps. If you have any questions or want to add information to this video, then feel free to go to the comments section. Thank you.